Well, bless you guys. This is Robert Henderson, and thank you so much for joining us. I want to teach you some concepts about something that maybe you've never heard nothing about, or maybe you have. And if you have, I want to try to bring some clarity. I want to talk to you about the trading floors of heaven. Now, right off the bat, that may sound kind of odd to anybody that's never really thought in, in that idea. In other words, your mind may immediately go to like Wall Street or some place like that where uh, people are making trades and exchanging stocks and all that kind of thing. And the truth of the matter is in the spirit realm, maybe you wouldn't be a whole lot or, or very far off because there is very real trading floors in the dimensions of heaven. And I'm going to take you through some scriptures and hopefully be able to try to uh, prove this to you. Now, right off the bat, I just want you to understand that there are some things that are being taught, and I say this as a disclaimer, out there that I probably wouldn't adhere to. And I'm, I don't want to get off on the critical or being criti criticizing or being critical right off the bat, but I do want you to understand that, that everything that I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you from a biblical standpoint of what I understand the trading floors in the spirit realm are, are. Now, before we go into that, I need for, for, for us to really grasp this. this is, I think this is a good idea to, to, to put into place. That there are spiritual dimensions, and I have found at least eight different spiritual dimensions that we can step into. Now, don't let that freak you out. For, for, let me, for instance, for, for years and years and years, uh, I've been a man of prayer uh, since 1980. I mean, I've given myself to prayer at the mandate of God. And as I moved into those realms, what I discovered was that as I would pray, the, the presence of God would come. And, and this is the way I would phrase it. I mean, God's presence would come. I would use those terms. God's presence would come. I would talk to my wife. Or I said, man, God's presence was so strong this morning. But I found out something. I found out that it wasn't just the presence of the Lord. I found out I was actually stepping into spiritual dimensions. And that began to change the way I thought because I realized that it wasn't just God's presence, that there was many other things that were in this presence or accompanying this presence that was giving me the sensation or the experience and the encounters that I was having in those places. And I still have that today. But I don't any longer think, oh, it was just the presence of the Lord. Now I'm aware that instead of the presence of the Lord coming to me, get this, I, as I pray, am actually stepping into a dimension of the Spirit that I'm interacting with. Now, to help us understand that, let me give you a definition for prayer. Prayer is not trying to convince God to do something for you. Prayer is stepping into spiritual dimensions and helping shift things through our faith, through our repentance, through our activities with God so that what is in heaven can come into earth. See, if, if prayer is trying to convince God to do something for us, then what did Jesus do? See, Jesus has already given us access. We're not having to convince God to do something He already wants to do. He needs for us as His agents to take our place, to take our position, in spiritual dimensions and function there so that what is in heaven can penetrate and impact the earth. Now, we're not here to really teach about that, but I wanted to say that before I move into this whole realm of the trading floors because the trading floors are actually a spiritual dimension. And we find them mentioned in, in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verses 14 through 16. So let me just show you this verse. It says you, this is, by the way, this is talking about Lucifer, which became Satan after he was thrown out of heaven. It's talking about Lucifer in his function in heaven. So here's what God said. You are the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. <laughs> you are on the holy mountain of God. That's important. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the days you were created till iniquity was found in you. And then he says, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Okay, when we read this, the first mention of trading here in verse 16, it would seem like it's negative. 
Because it says of Satan, or Lucifer before he was Satan when he was thrown out, that through the abundance of his trading, he became filled with violence. So we would immediately look at that and say, well, wait a minute. See, trading is evil. No. Watch what he says. He says, you were perfect in all your ways until iniquity was found in you. And then it says, by the abundance of your trading. So you got to get this. I want to make a statement. Trading is a heavenly activity. Or, let's put it in our vernacular, trading is a spiritual activity. It's something that's spiritual. See, what made it wrong with Lucifer and got him thrown out of heaven so that he became Satan was not that he traded, it was that he traded with a polluted heart. He traded with a defiled heart. When iniquity was found in, in him, the motives and the intent uh, connected to his trading is what made it evil before God. And because he traded with a, with a motive and with an intent that was evil, it caused God to throw him out of the mountain of God and from off of the fiery stones, which is actually the trading floor of heaven. Now, I'm going to qualify all this, okay? Uh, so, but let, let me just say this at first, okay? It says, so Satan as Lucifer was was on the was on the holy mountain of God. Okay, that is a scripture or that is a, a term that also defines a spiritual dimension. <clears throat> so trading floors is a spiritual dimension, but the mountain of God is a spiritual dimension. Anytime you read about the mountain of God, you're reading about a heavenly governmental dimension. Now in Hebrews 12, 22, it says, you have come to Mount Zion. And I just, I just got to get you to understand this. So Satan is thrown out of the mountain of God. And the Bible says in the New Testament, we have come to Mount Zion, which would be the mountain of God. So get what he's saying here. He is saying one of the reasons Satan hates us so bad is because he was thrown out of a dimension we now have access to. That the very realm he used to function in, the very spiritual realm called the mountain of God, we now have come to. That we now have the right to function in this holy mountain of God that in the New Testament is called Mount Zion. <clears throat> Now that's important because when you read through Hebrews 12, 22 through 24, you're going to find out that in this spiritual dimension called the mountain of God or Mount Zion, that everything is legal. Because it says there, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, to innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, watch, to the church of the firstborn, which is registered in heaven. The word church is a legal term. You may not have known that. It's the ecclesia. It means the legislative, governmental, judicial people of God. It says that you have come to, to a God, the judge of all, not father, not friend, not Lord, not Savior, not King, judge. Why? Because it's a, it's a judicial realm. It's a legal realm. He said you have come to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's a reference to the great cloud of witnesses or those who give judicial testimony. You have come to the mediator of a new covenant. Mediator is a legal term. New covenant or covenant is a legal term and to the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. And so when it says it's speaking, Abel's blood gave testimony that caused God to judge Cain. So Jesus' blood is now giving testimony that's giving God the legal right to forgive us and to redeem us. So everything that's mentioned there in Hebrews 12, 22 through 24 is legal. So it says in this thing called, the Mount, called Mount Zion or the mountain of God, if you can get this, it's the place where the courts of heaven operate. Now, many of you have heard my teaching on the courts. See, this is the place. But see, what else goes on in the court? What else goes on in this place of the courts? Please hear me. In the mountain of God, in Mount Zion, trading. Because see, that's what Satan did uh, as Lucifer in heaven. He traded in that holy mountain of God, which is the place where the judicial system of God operates. So I'm saying all that to say this: trading is a part of the operation of the courts of heaven. That literally we can step into the courts of heaven, into that spiritual dimension, and began to make trades. Now, having established that just briefly, let me share this with you. If you're going to really believe that trading is a spiritual activity, let me take you on a journey, okay? The first thing I want you to realize is that when Jesus died on the cross, he made a trade. 
See, see, this, this is this is real significant because when I saw this, it made me realize, wait, trading is spiritual. It is a heavenly activity because the whole purpose of the cross was to make a trade. In, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Jesus, uh, it, it says of Jesus, it says that he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's very powerful. That's a trade. See, Jesus took our sin and gave us his righteousness. He, he, he didn't just take sin, he became sin, and he made us righteousness. So that when we stand before the Lord, we now stand as, as the righteousness of God because of a trade Jesus made. See, because the cross was a trade, but it doesn't stop there. It also says in Isaiah 53 and verse 4, it says that he carried away our, 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 our sorrows, our griefs, and bore away our pains, our sorrows. So that, that's literally what it says. It doesn't say like sorrows and griefs. It actually, says, it actually says diseases and pains. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took our pain, he took our diseases, and he gave us his health. See, again, he Healing is a trade. See, we get healed because of the trade of Jesus on the cross, but it doesn't end there. I think it's Isaiah, or excuse me, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, where that it says that he, be, he became poor for us or he, so that we might become rich. It said that he, by the grace of God, he became poor. He took our poverty so that we could become rich. So literally, he made another trade. He traded away his riches. He took poverty so that we could be rich, so that literally the Spirit, of poverty no longer has the right to dominate our lives because of the trade that Jesus made. Now this is really important. See, what I'm trying to establish for you is this, that trading is a spiritual activity. It's something that we do uh, and that Jesus has done for us. So in, 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 the, in the realms of what Jesus did, here's what you got to get. When Jesus made the trade, it's done. It's an accomplished thing. So what do we do? We step into the trade he made. See, in other words, I by faith say I want the benefits of his trade. I want what he, made, he, what he did for me. I want, what the, for the, I want the trade he made on the cross. I want that to be ra uh, reality in my life. And see, this is how we experience salvation. This is how we experience and receive all that Jesus did for us. We step into, by faith, the trade he has already made. But it doesn't end there. Let me show you a scripture in Isaiah chapter 60, 61 that most of us would be uh, familiar with. Isaiah 61 and, and uh, the, the whole issue of, the, of another trade. And I love this because it shows us the power of trading in the spirit realm. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61 and verse, uh, verse 3. It says, it's talking about uh, uh, that he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon him to preach the gospel of the poor, so forth. And in verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, that's a trade, to give them beauty for ashes, to give them the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So Jesus is saying here, or the prophet is saying here, look, there's a trade that you're able to make. You're able to bring your ashes and trade it for his beauty. You're able to bring your mourning and trade it for the oil of joy. You're able to bring the spirit of heaviness and trade it for a garment of praise. See, the, the prophet is actually encouraging us to make a trade. Now, this, But this is what I want you to see. It says that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I love this. Watch. What happens when we learn to trade? Transformation occurs. When we trade, we become trans transformed. We are transformed from weakness, from ineffectiveness, from brokenness to trees of righteousness, the demonstration of his splendor, the planting of the Lord, that which is immovable, that which is fruitful, that which is transformed from weakness to strength. But it all occurs from us making trades. So you've got to understand, there are times we need to step onto this spiritual dimension called the trading floors, into this spirit realm. And please hear this. We know what Jesus did, but watch, we come and we bring our ashes. What are ashes? Those burn up places in our life, those places of failure, those places where it seems it's all over, it's final, that nothing good is going to happen. All hope is gone. That's what ashes speak of. And we bring that in the spirit and we say, Lord, I by faith, I trade this. I give this to you and I receive in exchange your beauty. You just made a trade. 
See, you just made a trade. And what's happening? If you do that consistently enough, progressively enough, day in, day out. See, what do you do? Well, whenever you feel depressed, you come and you make the trade. See, what are you doing when you get depressed? Because watch what he says. He says he wants to give us the, the oil of joy for mourning. So what we do, when I'm mourning, when I'm weeping, when I'm crying, when I'm depressed, when I'm sad, when everything's falling to pieces, what do I do? Do I just wallow in it? Do I, do I crawl up in a fetal position? No. What do I do? I come and I make a trade. And I promise you, as we do that consistently, by faith, stepping onto the trading floors of heaven that we have been given access to, get this, and I make the trade, I, through a process, will become a tree of righteousness. The splendor and declared glory of the Lord, the planting of God. See, this, this is what happens. Every time I make that trade, every time I make that trade, every time I choose to bring my brokenness, every time I don't allow depression, I don't allow heartache, I don't allow having a bad day, I don't allow that to rule over me, I come and I make that trade. I, see, I know what I'm talking about because I do this in prayer every time, every day. I get up and I begin to pray. And, and I promise you, before I'm through praying, my entire perspective has changed because now I realize what I actually am doing, I'm stepping onto the trading floors and I'm making trades on that trading floor that is being accepted into heaven and I am receiving back from the Lord his victory his life his power his healing his health his riches all the things that he has died for me to have I hope that makes sense to you because these are spiritual dimensions we can step into and begin to function from now here it says uh, very clearly that he was thrown, that Satan, as Lucifer, was thrown off out of the holy mountain of God. And then it says, from the fiery stones. Now, to help qualify that, let me explain this to you. The fiery stones is a place of a fire. It's a place where things are consumed. That's what happens on the fiery stones. Things are consumed. Well, See, if you, once you understand this dimension of the Spirit called the trading floors, then all of a sudden a lot more Scripture can start to make sense. For instance, in Genesis chapter 8 and verses 20 through 22, Noah comes out of the ark. Okay, he comes out of the ark. The water's finally dried up. He comes out of the ark. He build, The first thing he does is he builds an altar. Okay, what is an altar? An altar, you may not have known this, but an altar is a trading floor. Because Noah is about to make a trade with God. you got to get this. He comes out of the ark, he builds an altar, and he takes of the animals that he brought onto the ark for the purpose of offering them to God. Remember, he didn't just take two of everything. Of the clean animals, sometimes he took seven. Why? Because he knew that when they came out of the ark, he was going to need animals that he could use to bring a sacrifice to the Lord. So he builds an altar, or if you will, what's on an altar? It's fire. It's wood and fire and all these kind of things that's going to consume the offering. So watch, because Noah could not get to the trading floor of heaven, he could not physically step on the trading floor of heaven, on the fiery stones. He built an altar in the earth that God accepted. Okay, so he steps onto this, on the trading floor called an altar, and he offers up an offering. Okay, get this. When he offers up the offering, it says that the smoke and the incense that came up off that offering became a soothing aroma in the heart of God. Now, if you read back, you're going to find out that Noah, that God's heart was grieved by what was going on in the earth. That's why he destroyed it in the first place. That when he saw the evil of man in the days of Noah, the Bible says his heart was grieved. And he became so grieved, he said, I'm sorry that I made man. I mean, God regretted having made, making man because of the evil that was going on in the earth. Think about that. And so now Noah is offering an offering. Everybody's dead. There's nobody left alive but Noah and his family. And so now he offers an offering on an altar that he has created. And when God smells the aroma of that offering, his heart is soothed. See, what does that mean? That means the grief he had been carried in his heart was comforted. That it so moved the heart of God because of the 
offering of Noah up on a trading floor called an altar. Now watch what God did. It said that God was moved to make this decree. He said, I will no longer curse the earth with a curse. And he began to set things in the divine order. He said, there'll be seasons, there'll be times, there'll be sowing, there'll be reaping, there'll be all these things that'll be set into place. And we, know, we call that the Noahic covenant that is set into place, that, that is still set into place over the earth today. Okay, but God released the earth from the curse. Why? Because when Noah created an, an altar that became a trading floor and he offered the offering up on it, it released a soothing aroma that touched the heart of God. And God, from that soothing aroma, made a judicial decree that set things into order in the earth and released it from the curse. This is the power of coming up on the trading floors. That Listen, we're New Testament people. See, Noah was Old Testament people. And, and I tell people this, watch. The a soothing aroma that, that God smelt, it wasn't the burning of animal, the, the, the stench of animal flesh burning. It was the pureness of Noah's heart that was coming through the offering that God smelt. And because his heart so moved the heart of God that literally God issued a judicial decree. Now, what does that mean? When we step onto the trading floors by faith into this realm on the holy mountain of God, into the courts of, of heaven, and we begin to make trades. Listen, tra listen, trades can be our repentance. Trades can be our faith. Trades uh, can be any number of things. Trades can involve money. But when we step onto the trading floors and we begin to say, God, I am here for one reason, and that's to honor you. I am here to love you with my whole heart, even as Noah did. I am here to step onto this trading floor and to make a trade before you. And I'm asking, Lord, that my offering, that which I am bringing before you, would be accepted before you. Then from the fiery stones, that offering can be consumed and it releases a smoke and an incense before God that causes the aroma to come before him to move his heart to be able to release things from curses and to set things into divine order. Now help to help you understand, I'm going to show you one scripture. Philippians chapter chapter 4. And I want to show you how that God is still looking for a soothing aroma. He is still looking for some people to step onto the trading floors of heaven and release a, a soothing aroma before him. And so in, in Philippians um, chapter 4, uh, where Paul is actually speaking to the Philippians about the, about the offering that they have brought. But listen, this is not just about a monetary offering. This is about bringing something that's, a, that's valuable, that's precious, that, that pleases God. Okay, so watch what he says here in Philippians chapter 4. And let me just start at verse 14. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Paul had a need. He said, now you Philippians know also that, the, at, that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Okay, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Now watch what he says. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Notice he said, because, I believe he's saying, because you have stepped onto the trading floors and you have brought an offering that has been consumed before God and it has released a sweet-smelling Savior. It has released a sweet-smelling aroma before God. Do you see this here? He said, watch what he said. He said, because it has been released before him and this aroma is now coming. Watch what he says. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Notice what he's saying. He's saying, because you have stepped onto the trading floor, and you have brought this offering that is acceptable. Again, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about that which is acceptable before Him. I'm talking about that which is pleasing before Him. Because you have brought this offering to me, my God shall meet all your needs according to His riches and glory. In other words, something has shifted, something has moved, so that based on your activity on a trading floor, 
Are you getting this? All of a sudden, things are shifting and moving so that every need that you have, every need that you're crying out to God for, God shall meet all of it according to His riches in glory. What a powerful thing. So I say to us, let's step in, onto the trading floors of it. Let's recognize where we are, that we have been called, we have been positioned, we have come to Mount Zion, the place of the trading floors. And in that place, one of the things we can do is release trades uh, in a spiritual dimension that allows the things to shift, the things to move, so God's purposes can be done in the earth. So let me pray for you. Father, I just want to ask that even now, as we would just come and stand before you on these trading floors. Father, we want to thank you for the place you have given us, Lord, as your people, that even as Satan was up on the holy mountain of God, but you cast him out of there, that you say you have now brought us to Mount Zion, to this spiritual, judicial place. And even as we would come to stand in this place, we recognize that in this place are literally the fiery stones of heaven. And again, by faith, we just take our place there. We just, we just, by, in the spirit, we're just aware that we're standing in this place. We want to bring to you our trade. Lord, we want to bring our repentance. We want to bring our faith. Lord, maybe we want to bring our, the ashes of our life. Maybe we, want to, maybe we want to bring the heaviness. Maybe we want to bring the mourning. And Lord, Jesus, Lord we, just want to, we just want to submit that to you. We want to give that to you. And we want to ask, Lord, that you would give us ash, or you would give us beauty, that you would give us the oil of joy, that the garment of praise would just begin to come over us. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. I, I'm just seeing, even as I'm praying this, I'm seeing depression being broken. Even as we're standing on the trading floors, depression is coming off of the people of God. I decree this over you. Even now as you stand on in this place and you make this trade, I say the spirit of depression, the spirit of, of heaviness and of mourning, it is removed. That thing that has had its clutches in you, its legal right from the judicial place of heaven is now revoked and removed. Even all that Jesus died for you to have, it is even now coming into your life. So I release that to you even as we stand there. I say healing begins to flow in every dimension. Healing begins to flow even into your life in Jesus' name. I thank you for doing this, Lord. I thank you for this. I see, I see provision coming. I also see financial provision. I pray that even as we would stand on these trading floors, we, we trade, Lord, our insufficiency. We trade our lack. We take the lack that we have and we trade it, Lord. And we thank you for abundant provision. We thank you for abundant provision to begin to come into our lives. We thank you that there is an anointing even now that is being released, oh God, that is breaking the yokes and causing, Lord, even I see barrenness, barrenness that has caused unfruitfulness. There is barrenness that is being broken and is being removed and that there is now a fruitfulness that is even coming coming into our lives even as we stand on these trading floors of heaven and we just want to thank you for it lord we just want to thank you for it now i just i just sense just lift your hands and just begin just to worship him and just receive lord lord i thank you as we stand in this place lord thank you lord for this dimension of the trading floors of heaven thank you that you teach us to come here Thank you for the honor and the privilege of receiving of the fullness of everything that Jesus died for us to have. Thank you for it so much, Lord. And I bless your people in Jesus' name. Now, listen, by faith, just receive what's, what, what we have just released. By faith, let that become a reality in your life. Okay? Just begin to let it work in your life because I promise you that even, even as, you, as you learn to stand, and by the way, recognize see you can feel the atmosphere recognize where you are and listen just come before the Lord and just come and just say Lord I just want to stand on your trading floors and I promise you that spiritual dimension will open up and this atmosphere that you're feeling you'll be able to move into and I even sense this there's some of you that are watching this that that there's some kind of issues generationally that would work against you. I say that, that even generational curses against you are broken and removed that would whisper to you, but this is what I see, that would whisper to you and say, you can't do that. You're unworthy of that. I release you from that. I say, that is a lie 
from, from, from hell that has actually has its roots and some kind of a thinking that comes out of your generation. That there's been mindsets created in your generations that are actually cursed. I release you from that and I say you are freed from that realm of thinking that is coming out of your generations and I say you have a new mindset and a new understanding that allows you to think with a renewed mind so you can take your place in the mountain of God on the holy fi the, the fiery stones and there make trades and receive everything Jesus has died for you to have. So I bless you with that. I say let the fullness of it be made manifest in Jesus' name. Lord bless you.